Sandy Hook was a game changer for me. And since Sandy Hook, uh, I supported a piece of legislation, actually before Sandy Hook, uh, when the NRA gave me money, and I would tell you that it wasn't a good investment for them, uh, I supported a bill that said if you're a domestic abuser and you have a protective order against you, that you get your guns taken away from you. Uh, 2013, I supported the Firearm Safety Act of 2013. That said, if you're voluntarily or involuntarily committed into a mental health facility, you lose access to your weapons. It also outlawed AR-15s and a lot of other uh, high-powered weapons. Uh, this year, five years after that 2013 vote, I co-sponsored bump stocks. So I had an A rating and I have an F rating from 2014 forward. Uh, and that's what I currently have, uh, an F rating despite all the mail and other things. And there's a website uh, that identifies that, that is connected to the mailing we did. I think it's called votesmart.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, votesmart.org. And I would encourage your viewers to go into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm endorsed by NARAL Pro-Choice Maryland, which is huge. Uh, and I've been their advocate for 16 years. They've endorsed me in every single election. I have a 100% pro-choice voting record. Uh, and I've had their back and uh, it's, it's important. Uh, and it's, it's important to know who I am as a candidate. Uh, I've been endorsed by the League of Conservation Voters in every single election, uh, and I have a 90, either a 92 or a 94 percent lifetime voting record with them. It's co-sponsored the Healthy Air Act, co-sponsored uh, the ban on fracking, co-sponsored uh, offshore drilling, uh, and took a stand for years and was like one of three, one of the most liberal Democrats to take a stand at saying what they do at Bresco. Uh, near near 295 when you get off of BWI Airport, that incinerator, that that's not renewable energy. That's incineration that causes soot in the air. Uh, and there were a lot of Democrats that wouldn't go that far uh, because of the influence uh, that special interests gave. And uh, we finally won that victory in the Senate this year, uh, but it got killed in the House. So I have been uh, a leading environmental champion uh, in, the, in, in the Maryland Senate. And it's a record I'm really proud of, which kind of uh, jumps on to one of the reasons I, I'm running for county executive, which is preserving open space, park, more parks and ball fields, and making sure developers don't pour concrete all over Baltimore County, which is why I decided to run. I just I couldn't tolerate the loss of open space at the rate we're having. And upon, inv upon investigating it further, uh, it just became apparent to me that it's this, it's this pay to play thing where developers give certain council members campaign contributions and then it's, it's a free-for-all. Uh, there's gonna be development opportunities in Baltimore County if I'm county executive, but they're gonna be redevelopment opportunities. It's gonna be the redevelopment of, of Towson without tax, without a $43 million bailout. It's gonna be redeveloping Security Square Mall uh, and having a, a green vegetative uh, buffer uh, or a, a green center where kids can play and people can do in quality shops and quality restaurants and. Whole Foods type grocery stores. It's gonna be Pikesville and redoing the armory uh, and maybe having an arts center there and having green there and sustainability. It's gonna be getting rid of plastic bags and using uh, recyclable paper uh, bags at grocery stores the way they do in Montgomery County. It's gonna be bike trails where we try and emulate what they do in Sanibel, Sanibel Island where you have the road, four feet of green, and then the bike lane. So I'm talking about a new way of life in Baltimore County. I'm talking about vision and creativity, uh, and I'm talking about preserving what we have. I was one of the deciding votes in the Senate, and uh, coming from a conservative district, uh, I was told by many that uh, if I voted for same-sex marriage, it would cost me my next election. And uh, right after I announced my support of same-sex marriage, two days later, three other Democrats joined me, and we passed it. So there's two issues on this. The first is the consent decree. And Baltimore County is under a consent decree that the next county executive has to bring this issue uh, to the council. And if the council approves it, then uh, they will. Then we will start bringing in uh, more Section 8 vouchers for, uh, in, into the county and, and, and accepting them from Baltimore City. I'm going to adhere to the consent decree because that's the law. Uh, there are some Republican candidates that are saying they're going to fight it. Well, it's a consent decree that, uh, that the former county executive agreed to. And I'm going to adhere to the consent decree and I'm going to follow the law and bring it to the council. With that being said, 
Uh, I don't think the makeup of this council is going to support it, and they haven't in, in, in the past, which goes to option two. And I think option two is something that everybody can probably get around, which is when new housing comes into Baltimore County, and there are urban areas where we can grow in, like Towson News is the perfect example, where we, we have, they have 23 houses there in urban areas, and there are urban areas in Reisterstown Road corridor, Security and Frederick Road, where we can build housing like in that urban core. Uh, I'm gonna say as county executive that we won't issue uh, permits for those housing unless a certain percentage uh, is set aside for affordable housing. And it doesn't have to be a Section 8 voucher also. It can be that this is how much the, ho the, the housing costs uh, for 80 out of the 100 units, but this is how much the housing is cost for the other 20. And it'll fall under the definition of affordable housing. And I think it's a better, less divisive way to solve a problem that's important, uh, and we're gonna try and do it. So earned sick leave uh, is something I did not support. And uh, the Baltimore Sun didn't want me to support it either. Uh, they were against it, but that's not why I didn't support it. Uh, we have a lot of nonprofits in Baltimore County. Uh, one of them, and I'll give you an example, is Itinerous, uh, which is actually just over the county city line now. And we have a lot of county residents who have, or some county residents who have kids who are autistic or on the autism spectrum. And they have 30 employees there, approximately 30 employees. The law, which was passed, said that you're allowed to give up to five days of sick leave. Uh, I supported the amendment uh, and actually put in the, one of the amendments to make it two days of sick leave, uh, which I thought was, was reasonable and a good start. But the, the law that passed, the bill that passed was five days. If you take the itinerous example, 30 employees times five, that's 150 days of sick leave that they have to give. And the problem is they're reimbursed by Medicaid and it's a set expense, not just for itinerous, but for all nonprofits. So you get a certain amount of money in Medicaid back. They've maxed out on fundraising and everything else. So we're talking about cutting services to people who have developmental disabilities, people who are autistic. It's not, you know, the problem in Annapolis to, a, to an extent, and it's a much more bigger problem in DC, is that it's always all or none. And I thought that a reasonable thing would have been two days. I thought five days w was onerous uh, for nonprofits. Uh, and I didn't support the bill. And uh, I stand by it and there were, and look, some of the, the leaders of nonprofits who are some of the most liberal people in, in, in the state uh, urged me not to support it. And not some of them. There wasn't one nonprofit who came to me and said that this was a good idea and it was something that I should support. So I voted against the bill. But in that same mailer that you may be aware of, and it may be your next question, uh, there's something about minimum wage. I supported every minimum wage bill in 16 years in the Senate, every living wage bill, uh, and what the SEIU is putting out on that, the earned sick leave part is correct, but on the minimum wage and living wage bill, it's just, it's an, it's an outright lie. I mean, every, and you can go to my 2009 vote on a living wage piece of legislation, 2013 on minimum wage, there wasn't one minimum wage increase or one living wage increase that I did not support in 16 years this summer. So it was right after the election, and let me be clear, I was a Bernie Sanders supporter from, from the beginning. Uh, I, he was my candidate. Uh, and after he lost the primary, I went across Baltimore County to mosques, to community association meetings, uh, to numerous places uh, on my own time and urged people to not vote for Donald Trump. And talked about how divisive he was, talked about that they had to support the Democratic nominee who was Hillary Clinton, and that you could not, you could not support a president of the United States who was gonna divide America. And I did that uh, with every ounce of passion. I, I spoke to thousands of people. I spoke to a mosque one time on Johnny Cake Road with 800 people uh, and gave that speech. So I did everything in my power to try and make sure that Donald Trump did not become president of the United States. Uh, with that being said, he got elected. Shocker, okay, to, every, to everybody. I mean, I mean it's, really, it's really surreal. And uh, about a week after he got elected, I was asked to speak at Towson University. I, I speak to Dr. Batz's class all the time. And there were kids who were really, really freaked out. I mean, they were scared. They were and I said what I think any mature, responsible adult should say. I said, look, give him a chance. You know, maybe he understands that, yeah, you won the electoral college, but you lost the popular vote, not by 50 or 100,000 votes, you lost by like three and a half million votes. And America really doesn't support you, but this freaky system that, that we have, uh, you know, the electoral college uh, made you president and maybe you would support, maybe you would become the president of all the United States and find middle ground. And I said, give him a chance. And in the second part of that article in the tower light, I was pretty clear, uh, which is uh, if he doesn't come through and if he divides America, that you should take to the streets and you should protest him with every ounce of strength and energy you have. And that my fear 
uh, and I think it's coming to fruition, is that if he governed from the hard right, uh, that he was going to create many uh, numerous constitutional crises, and he has. I, mean, I, sit, I sat in a very safe Senate seat uh, representing Towson, and I could have, I don't know if I would have had any opposition in this last election. But the election to me is about overdevelopment. It's about pay to play. It's about developers getting unfettered access to our land and us ruining the quality of life for a county that uh, we should be cherishing parks and green space and open space. And we turn it over to developer. 